Good morning, Clay Chalkpool. This is Lauren Waters, and welcome back to another episode of Keeping Up with Clay Chalkpool. This month, we are moving forward and focusing on what the near future will bring us. But first, let's take a little look into the past. Last month, we connected with 2001 Senior Class President Courtney New to talk about her great high school experience and what made them want to make a time capsule. This month, we spoke with Lawrence Carter, the principal at the time the capsule was built, and asked him what he could tell us about it. Uh, I'm Lawrence Carter, former principal of Clay Chalkler High School. I started, uh, I worked a total of six years. Uh, I actually retired in 2002. We asked Mr. Carter to tell us his favorite memories from being principal at CCHS. I guess uh, one of the uh, biggest things was the uh, state championship in football in uh, the 99-2000 school year. That year, <clears throat> we also had uh, 25 of the 100 super scholars uh, based on the PSAT. We also asked Mr. Carter if he remembered what he put in the time capsule. I think I did. I think they asked me to uh, include a letter just to kind of highlight some of the things that had transpired uh, from the uh, beginning of the school. We also asked Mr. Carter to give the class of 2021 some advice. Uh, I think uh, just to continue, I mean, I think you have great leadership there in uh, Michael Lee and uh, very good teachers there to just uh, – Heed the advice of the current administration and the uh, teachers that are currently working there. Now that it is officially 2021, the time capsule will be open soon. We will update you as soon as we know when we will open this little piece of local history. We all know that self-expression is important, especially to teens. That's why Chloe Sparks interviewed a few fashion-forward thinkers to give us some insight on the recent changes in the fashion industry. Chloe? Throughout the years, fashion has repeated itself and is making a comeback for the new styles of 2021. From silk to crazy patterns and leather to shiny metallics, 2021 is definitely a year that you want to show off your inner style. Today, a few local businesses are going to tell us their new favorite trends to start off the new year. First, we heard from Anna Spanhauer. She is the regional manager at Molly Green, located at the Summit. She will be talking about mini skirts, neon, floral, layering, and tie-dye. Hi, I'm Anna Spainhauer and I am our regional manager here at Molly Green. And today I'm going to talk to you about my favorite new spring trends that are coming in 2020. Um, as always, we have our cute flirty mini skirts. Um, the fabric is a little bit lighter, which will be so great for spring. A big trend that's coming this season is going to be some brighter, more neon colors. So anything bright and happy, we all need some happy in 2021. We've got some beautiful florals that are gonna be hitting the shelf. Um, definitely pastels and strappy. And I love layering. It's one of my favorite trends right now, is layering styles together. And we're also seeing some more tie-dye this season. So lots of fun things to look forward to. Next, we heard from Darby Daniel, who works at South Boutique. She told us her favorite trends of 2021, white booties, leather, vintage designer, and different styles of denim. I'm Darby Daniel with South Boutique. One of the main trends this year is new white booties, especially combat boots. This is one example. Um, another one are these white booties right here. A big trend in 2021 has been leather. Spring clothing, leggings have been huge. People can throw it on with graphic tees, sweaters, booties, sneakers. And lots of people have been getting these leather tops. They're super unique and trendy right now. Something that's been really popular lately is vintage designer things, especially this set that we've had. Um, sold really well recently. A lot of people, especially with COVID, have been wearing lots more comfy, casual clothes. So this is one of the big trend this year. Another trend is gonna be the mom jeans. So this one you can see has more of the ripped look. Super popular right now, graphic tees. Another trend are gonna be jeans like this that play at the bottom. A lot of people have been wearing these as sneakers or booties. Lastly is Johanna from Lizard Thicket. She is talking about the must-have staples for 2021, including corduroy and chain necklaces. Hey, I'm Johanna and I'm from Lizard Thicket. For the trend of 2021, we have corduroy, um, specifically corduroy jackets. It's a shirt jacket that you can wear either 
um, over a top or as a top it, your, itself. We have blue and a nice green color. Another big trend in 2021 are chain necklaces. We have some thinner ones with some detailing or one that has a clasp in the front. So these are really good pieces for layering or wearing it as a statement necklace by yourself. Style is meant to be fun and adventurous. 2021 is definitely a year to bring out your wild side with fashion. Because 2021 is in the middle of a pandemic, the fashion industry has been quiet this year, but it does not take away this year's beauty. Most of the fashion trends have been inspired by the most influential decades. Thanks, Chloe. Many students have been learning from home this entire year and have been trying to navigate coming back to school in person. Let's see what tips Terry has for us with his segment called Tips with Terry. Hi, I'm Terry Jones. Now, I'm sure you are aware that we are now in the second semester. So, I thought it would be a great idea to provide us with some tips to help us all thrive this semester. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So, first tip, make sure that you are waking up early and allowing yourself enough time to eat breakfast. Good things to eat for breakfast may be eggs, sausage, which is protein, or some fruits. I mean, they don't say breakfast is the most important meal of the day for anything. Now that you've had time to eat a healthy breakfast, now it's time to work. Listen closely. Don't procrastinate. If you need additional help, ask more questions. If your grades are not looking too well, ask questions. And make time to study, which leads me into my next point. Hold yourself accountable. Now this goes out to all students, but if I learned anything as a remote student, it's that remote learning requires responsibility. So make sure you're not thinking about that funny TikTok video or that new Netflix film. Just because you're at home, remember that you are still in school, so stay focused. Now that your head has been filled with all of that work, it is important that you allow yourself to relax. Whether that's reading a book, watching TV, getting outside, or creating something, just make sure that you relax. Last tip. Make sure that you are going to bed early. Research says that high schoolers are supposed to get like eight to 10 hours of sleep, but in reality, most high schoolers are only getting about five to six. So in other words, stop watching TikTok at two o'clock in the morning and go to bed. Oh, would you look at that? It's my bedtime right now. Good night. Lights out. And now it's a brand new day. Now I know some of these tips may be easier said than done, but we still have to strive for greatness. I hope you found these tips helpful. This has been Terry Jones, CCN TV. Every student, every day. Back to you, Lauren. We hope our previously remote students find Terry's tips helpful. Speaking of tips, Jillian Johnson also has some great tips on staying organized for the last semester of the year. Check it out. Elizabeth Whitley to talk about how she uses her planner in her everyday life. Let's see what she has to say. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Whitley and I use an academic planner to help me stay organized throughout school. Um, it helps me, uh, like, I write down what um, days I have tests and then I also write down what assignments are due on what days and I keep my work schedule in it to keep up with that and I write down like how much I make each night. I use a written planner instead of the um, calendar app or a planner app on my phone because it helps me keep track better honestly because I think there's more room in my planner and I can just pull it out whenever I need it and a lot of the teachers are like some of them are more strict on phones versus others and so they're not going to question me why I have a planner out versus why I'm on my phone looking at a planner. I know that school can get pretty hectic and have you really busy. And sometimes you end up forgetting to do an assignment or you end up turning in an assignment late. So, to stay on top of your work and stay on schedule, I recommend using a planner. Planners come in many different shapes, sizes, colors, and designs. Some of them even come with cool stickers that you can decorate with. You can even use different colored pens so that everything is super colorful. Investing in a planner is a great idea, and it will not only help you stay organized in school, but also with activities outside of school as well. Having a planner is a great idea, and it will allow you to get through this year very smoothly. 
The end of January is coming up and Valentine's Day is not too far away. Now is the time to start thinking about what you want to get your special someone. Can't think of anything? Elizabeth has got you covered. Elizabeth? Hey Clay Chalkwell, it's Elizabeth here to give you some ideas about what to do for Valentine's Day. First up, we have Konomi. Konomi has a wide variety of foods to choose from. For a more peaceful night at home, you can call in order to go. If you're feeling adventurous, you can come in and eat, but for a more cherished time, I would sit at the table side. If you're wanting to have a good time and meet new people, the grills are always a good option when it comes to watching your food being cooked. Dessert options are always a must. They have things from chocolate tort cake to even fried ice cream. Second up, we have the Half Shell Oyster House. Half Shell Oyster House is a new restaurant in town that has been loved by so many. They have sit down in booths, high tops, and a bar. I highly recommend the char grilled oysters as a starter for this loving night. On their menu, they have a wide variety of foods from shrimp alfredo to a whole red snapper and even a po' boy. For dessert, they even have turtle cheesecake. And lastly, we are going to be featuring Chick-fil-A's little chicken mini heart baskets. Lastly is one of my favorite places to eat, Chick-fil-A. We all know every year they have the heart-shaped tins filled with chicken minis, nuggets, chocolate chunk cookies, and even fudge brownies. Since Valentine's Day is on a Sunday this year, they have these special treats available from January 25th through February 13th. Thanks, Elizabeth. Our sports information director, Michaela Dillard, sat down with tennis coach, Ms. Kohlenberg, to see what they've been up to lately. Check it out. Hi guys, this is Michaela from CCA TV. As you may or may not know, Clay Chalvin has had an outstanding tennis program since the 1990s. I've gotten one of the tennis coaches who's been here since about the beginning to get more of an inside look of what our program been like. Take a look. Hello, I'm Ms. Kullenberg. I help with the girls tennis team and I guess you could call me and Coach Hawkins maybe co-coaches, I guess, or you throw me in as assistant coach, I'm not really sure. I have been coaching here since 1998-99. I took two years off, kind of in the middle of all that. I took one year and went over and coached the boys tennis team. And we had another lady that was here years ago that did the girls tennis team. All right, I know that they had a girls tennis team one year before I came. Uh, was another guy that uh, taught it. So if I started in 98-99, so that would have been in 97-98. They had a team and we've had a, to my knowledge, a team every year since then. I was very excited when I heard information that we were gonna have the tennis courts. It was uh, very needed. We actually were told that we were gonna have the tennis courts years ago and that they would be at the sports complex that's on past the old library. And for whatever reason, I don't know, it might be space, it might've been money, that never happened. So when I was then told we were gonna have them like here close by, Again, doing a dance of joy. We don't have to worry about transportation to the actual uh, practices that we have and matches we have here because you can walk across the road right here. So extremely happy, but to have those there, to have the restrooms that are there, the bleachers have been put up, the lights have been put up, just a great convenience to be able to have our own home courts, uh, to be proud of having something that's nice and taken care of and that we don't have to travel through physically traveling through a couple other communities to get to the courts that we used to play at. All right, we are a little concerned about how COVID might impact our system. We only got to play five of our matches last year, which cut us up more than half of our percentage of our matches. So I've been concerned. We do not have the date yet for our county tournament, which concerns me why they haven't set the date for that yet. So I am uh, concerned about that. I have uh, had people who discussed that and were like, well, they've played basketball and they played football. You know, why in the world would this happen? But if y'all look at the numbers of what's happening with our uh, COVID numbers going up, I have been concerned that we might have some restrictions on that. And I uh, sure hope not. I hope we're able to have our season and complete it. Thanks, Ms. Kohlenberg. Now we actually have a better understanding of what our tennis program has been like so far. Back to you, Lauren. Thanks, Michaela. We've had a lot of time to sit around and be couch potatoes and watch movies, but Simone Smith is here to tell us 
what this year's most popular movies are. Simone? What's up, hey child? Well, this is Simone Smith, and today I'm giving you the upcoming movies in 2021. Starting at number one, we have A Little Thing starring Denzel Washington. This drama is about Deputy Sheriff Joe Deacon joins forces with Sergeant Jim Baxter. As they track the culprit, Baxter is unaware that the investigation is dredging up echoes of these past, uncovering disturbing secrets that could threaten more than his case. The release date is set at January 29th. Starting at number two, we have Space Jam, A New Legacy. NBA superstar LeBron James teams up with Bugs Bunny and the rest of the Looney Tunes for this long-awaited sequel. It is set to release on July 16th. Last and certainly not least, starting at number three is To All the Boys, Always and Forever. This is a sequel to All the Boys, P.S. I Still Love You, and the third and final installment in To All the Boys I've Loved Before film series. It is scheduled to release on February 12th by Netflix. Be sure to catch these amazing movies at your nearest TV or movie screen. This has been Simone Smith with CCN TV. See you later, Clay Chalkpool. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next month. Have a great day, Clay Chalkpool.